Okay. Good morning. Thank you very much for coming with in this wonderful spring day. So uh, we are uh, here very glad to uh, welcome uh, Juanjo González from Sol uh, 89 or 89 Architects. But uh, you know that before that, um, they are here because from the school we are working with this uh, asset design challenge uh, office, somehow a kind of help for students to let you start in the competition area that we think is very important to you start trying no? uh, this, this aspect with the uh, learning uh, outcomes too. And through this uh, common with uh, Foro Ceramico, we promote this, this competition, especially in, in other activities that I will quickly present before the, the, the lecture. So basically uh, we work or they work in these five uh, areas that we think that uh, can help in this learning uh, procedure to, to, your, to your career. And the main one and the one that we mostly promote or, or try to encourage you to, to work with is this project competition that you know that uh, in the school, and we will talk a little bit later, in this year uh, topic, it's this nine per nine per nine shelter, a small uh, element that it needs to be established in different uh, landscapes. So uh, I think it's the use of the brick is very important. You can uh, consult the basis of the competition also you can ask for them to me in English and I can uh, provide them too. And I think it's a very good uh, learning experience to try to compete no? and, and think about how that works. Some of you have already done it and experienced it. So you can also ask them, <laughs> the other uh, students and see how they like it or not. Um, also there are somehow like two ways of competing in this award. We are happy to be part of this uh, local school uh, uh, section where we promote the competition from the inside of the school. Also there's this uh, national one that the winners of the local competitions can even go for it. So it's this two-step competition. It's also important that from a school, although it's open to all of you, we work with this uh, digital project area with uh, Juan Miguel here. And that's a very interesting option too, because they work with the competition and in the same uh, subject, but also, sorry, go back to the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also it's open. The only uh, condition is that it's for third year and older. So if you are previous one, you just need to wait a little bit and work with, uh, in this way. So these two steps, I think it's interesting. It's completely free. Uh, we will hang up the, the presentation later, but just you need to visit the site of the Foro Ceramico and there is all the information. As I said, also, you can ask me directly and we can talk about it without uh, doubt. So you can work individually or collectively, you know? so some requests. The submission is 18th of May for our local uh, competition. And then there is some also awards in these two steps. So I think it's interesting too. You compete in between this local first step and then the winners will go for the big uh, prize. The jury of the first step is uh, mixed up between people of the school. Uh, some of the, those, you will know them and also from the Foro Ceramico. And then they jump to the big one, to the different uh, representatives of the different schools of architecture with really well-known uh, teachers and, and practitioners. There is also another type of uh, competition or uh, award that is based on this uh, more in research or um, uh, investigation area that goes for this master degree in terms of the final project for the old uh, um, semesters and for the final degree also if you are working with the uh, uh, brick. So again, the main aim is that the work has to be related to the brick and it's also with these two categories. 
And again, uh, the inscription is free, all the information is in, in, the, in the website. Also, again, if you need any extension of it, you can ask for it um, without problem. And there is also this, these prizes and these awards in terms of the different uh, categories. Also with this uh, well-known uh, and recognized uh, jury uh, panel. And another important part as uh, Juanjo is part of it that's going to uh, let their presentation. The important thing also is that there are other studios that the presentations have been recorded in the, in the website, so you can go and access them too. And these are some of them from this year uh, lectures, some Magen Arquitectos, uh, Gradoli and Sanz, La Puerta and Campo, and Garcés de Seta and Bonnet. Uh, so these are really interesting also studios working with this uh, materiality. And I think it's also, again, a new opportunity to, to learn no, in another way. Also more linked to the uh, construction uh, part of the uh, learning is this all these conferences re related to elements that you can learn from them. No? So there are parts of this explanation of materialities, contracted details, all based on this brick uh, facet that you can also uh, if you are interested in, just uh, ask for it or look in the, in the website. They have been, after this COVID um, break, they have been reestablishing the factory visit. So again, there's an interesting thing to, to go and visit how the, these materials are uh, produced. So I think that's another interesting part to, to link for the students. And finally, they work with this dissemination aspect of all these uh, elements uh, that they have been uh, working basically through award ceremony for the awards of the different competitions and with a book that from this uh, year is going to be digital. I have to say that I've got the last past year book for the ones who you have compete in the activity of the project of last year. So if you did that, just come to the office again and I will give you your, your book and other, other type of disseminations in terms of the, the website or all the networks, social networks that they, they work with. And finally, I just want to add that uh, there is a small survey that the teachers of projects we will uh, give you uh, next class, I suppose, where you will just answer a, a few questions about the, the conference and the activities. So if you are interested in, in, it, in any of those. Okay, and just quickly, um, a few words for uh, Juanjo. Uh, I think it's, again, a, a pleasure and an, an honor to have such a studio here. They come from, from south of Spain, so a little bit different. I think it's very nice uh, from Sevilla. They have this, I don't know, I can say nothing but good work no? in terms of amazing uh, career, in terms of multi-awards, but I will just like to highlight they, these two aspects in, in their relation with materiality. So I think basically that's why they are here today, you know, this sensibility, how they use it, but especially again, this look for the uh, common spaces, you know, this, how the architecture is not only what we get in, you know, but how this limit is always looking for something else, you know, giving a present for the rest of the, of the city. I think it's really, really uh, interesting. Uh, just uh, finish with the um, ability that they have to, that I think it's really difficult to uh, be able to work in a such a, a good manner, teach, research. So they work with these three, uh, very interesting that they feel each other part uh, in a very good way. And just finish with this uh, welcoming, uh, Juanjo, and, and thank you very much being here today. So thank you.
Thank you so much to the CEU Universidad Cardenal Herrera and the staff of the school. Okay, thank you. And the staff of the School of Architecture for your kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here again. This is the second time I'm here in, not in this auditorium, in fact, the other time was in the, in the school. But uh, the first time I spoke in Spanish, it was much easier for me than today, as you will see, probably. But it's beautiful to see that this School of Architecture is in good shape teaching now for students from all over the world. It's um, good news, I think. I have to, tengo que dar los dos a la vez, ¿no? Así. Así, so. I'm going to talk about some projects of my office. Its name is Sol 89, as uh, Javier has said. You can better call Sol, you know, as the, okay. <laughs> But first I have to introduce ourselves to explain some things about our work. So Chantinueve is a literal practice from the south of Spain, as Javier said. We are a peripheral practice and we started to working at the beginning of the century. When we started to work, we decided not to specialize in any aspect of the architectural practice. It was not a popular decision at the time when everybody said that there were too many architects and that you had to specialize to get work. But we were actually interested in many things. From then on, we have tried to combine teaching, professional practice and research. One of the consequences of uh, this decision, it is that we have made many different kinds of projects with various sizes, with large budgets, but also with minimal budgets with low technology or some others more sophisticated ones. Very close to our office, our nowadays, developing some public buildings in South Korea, thanks to some competitions we were able to win. So perhaps there is some characteristic in common to all these projects that we have carried on and the research we have de developed. All of them are related to this place the city in which we live and we work. This is an image of the historic city of Seville. This is a very dense structure, a new run form here to the medieval Arab culture that lived in the city during eight centuries. At that time, Seville became one of the largest world cities in Europe. But inside the world, the city was not large at all. There were many voids and lots of crops to the point that when King Fernando conquered the city, he took a big disappointment because the city was not as big as it seemed. Uh, on this way, Seville has grown in a particular way. It hasn't broken its walls around the end of the 19th century, such as Barcelona or Valencia did, developing new expansion areas or peripheral neighborhoods. Seville so has been growing towards the interior of its walls until the, mid the middle of the 20th century, densifying the urban structure with very built and large plots, even bigger than those of, you know, Plan Cerda in Barcelona, with narrow streets and many little empty spaces inside the plots. In an implosion process where the buildings needs Zaguanes is a Spanish word that talk about a, a kind of corridor between the street and the, and the inside of the plots. Adarves for going in the interior of the plots, like this that you can see in this example of a plot of the center of Seville, full of, of empty spaces. And uh, this kind of a space this is the kind of Zaguanes. This is strange. Uh, open room to the street that is private but very related to the public space. All these other, the patios, the courtyards, open corridors and galleries to get light and ventilations of in these very dense and big uh, plots of the city. So the resulting landscape is a place where the limit of interior architecture is not the street or the public space, but a change of in-between spaces. Like in these images, where well, we can see different popular patios, Hawaiian, as I said, spaces where private and public lives are mixed, like in this photograph. 
we can recognize that this heritage has finally influenced how we understand the architecture and the limits of architecture. We have tried to learn from the historical city and this relation between the inside and the outside of the architectural space. First project I would like to explain, it's a quiet former one. It was the first time we have used the facing brick as the main material of the building. The project is located in a suburban neighborhood in the periphery of Seville. People came from the countryside to the city at the 60s, the last century, and they built themselves their houses and little storks in the same blocks depending on their necessity without a urban plan before. The point is the, that this kind of self-construction produced a, a morphology of its block that we can discover unexpected labyrinths of surprising spaces that have been adhering to one another in a hazardous way. In this unplanned city, urban ev events are condensed on the built mass as spontaneous gardens, ambiguous places, uh, intermediate through plants linked by patios that hollow out, out the block. In our case, we had to project a training center for the young people of the neighborhood. And we wanted to explore these spontaneous resources of a space density close to the historical cities one. The training center offers a labyrinth of spaces where the full plan notion is blurred by a continuous path that links the different spaces. ¿Qué tal se ve? Bien, ¿no? Eso se ha entendido, ¿no? The project is a chain of spaces that uh, face each other, allows diagonal views, places that involve other places and diluating the relationship between the interior and the exterior. Situations of density that mix uses like in the unplanned plot. We wanted that the distribution spaces of the building had a urban quality, as the Adarve is a kind of uh, open street, perhaps more private than, than the, the, the public street, but they are also in the, in the, in the inside of the plots or the courtyard. So we decided to use a black brick on the facade that go into the inside the building, blurring the limit between, between inside and outside. We were interested in the double lecture of this material, the facing brick, as a continuous skin looked from a long distance. The same brick recovered the different surfaces of the facades. Or as a more delicate piece when you are close to the walls and you can observe the joints and size of each brick. Bricks allowed us to recover the different planes of the volume of the building with no matter if it was a big wall, the frame of the terraces, the full sailing of the exterior roof. On this way, the main learning places such as this classroom or the workshops are white rooms full of light and the spaces between, sorry, and the spaces between them are built with the facing black brick coming from the outside into the building. The walls of black bricks go outside again on the head of the plot in form of courtyards and the narrow streets of the historical city. These uh, serious spaces are treated as an inner room uh, with a pergola for pergola, you know, I think it's the same word in English. It's an element for bailing the rooftop of the neighbor of the neighbors and protecting against too much sun in Seville. You know, in Seville, you can die by sun in summer. It's something horrible. The focus is to erase again the physical limit between out and inside building, almost a building, almost an inner room. Facing again toward you came from in this continuous path or uh, when you walk by in the building where we try to mix the different uses. We choose a black brick not only on the face, but in the mass. I mean, it's not only in the mass of the brick is, is also black. We thought that it would be better for its maintenance and we arrange a marble structure, a kind of, of a structure to reinforce the walls. And we line also the exterior forcings 
and fell in some floors with the same rings. Sikina continues skiing related with some tradition of Seville's public building built on brick since the 19th century. At the end, the continuity of the clay skiing allow us to reinforce the idea of a chain in between spaces which come from outside to the interior of the plot with no interruptions. As in the no planning urban of the self-construction houses of the neighborhood or in the historic city of Seville. We find this quality of clay very interesting as a material that comes from the heart of the earth, as a moist and malleable matter that reaches the surface through the work of human ingenuity. And thanks to fire, becomes a very resistant and insulating material. You know that Gottfried Semper tells us how the Mesopotamians used it to build the fireplace uh, as the head of the houses. Indeed, in the Latin languages, focus, fire, and home share etymological origin. Fire is the place of the home. Later, when they verified it's a good, a very good insulating material, Mesopotamians began to replace the textile facades with ceramic facades. This journey of clay from the interior of the earth to outer space continues today. And you know, the ceramics are used as an insulating shell for aerospace rockets. Amazing, no? <laughs> in, the south of West, uh, in the southwest of Spain, where, where I live, we don't have uh, we don't have got stones or wood to be long, but we don't, but we do have a river, no? a, a very important river, the Guadalquivir River. In Roman times, the great delta of this river linked the cities of Cadiz, Huelva, and Seville, perhaps the three most important cities in the west south of uh, Spain. We were working with our students in the last year of degree on landscape influenced by the raw material that you can find in them such as the salt flats on the Huelva's coast, the iron from Rio Tinto, or the lime from Moron de la Frontera. One of these places that we study was this group of towns related to obtaining clay. It is very interesting to know how they, re they reinforce the clay with the rice husk, the other treasure of the marshland, closing the cycle of a matter intim intimately uh, linked to this place. So when the ceramic reaches the facades of the buildings, it begins to establish a dialogue with the context, influencing the culture of the place. Gaston Bachelard's notion of material imagination is grounded on this premise, that an intimate interconnection exists between human memory and imagination. Imagination shapes and creates memory, as memory exists only as imagination. In his famous book, Water and Dreams, Bachelard proposed a distinction, a distinction sorry, between the formal imagination and the material imagination by considering how the propensity of images arising from matter project deeper and more profound experiences than those of form. So the material is more important than, than form. In fact, we can consider that the most interesting Spanish architecture created in the last years have been conceived as a matter of construction rather than as a formal problem. The following, the following project arises from this point of view, the matter of clay as a memory device. The project is located in Medina Sidonia, in Cadiz, in the south of Spain. It's a town in the south of the peninsula um, uh, whose early foundation at the Phoenician times respond to its elevated place that allowed the ter territorial control of Cadiz coast. This topographic situation allows us the continuous contemplation of its roofs that go up the hill where they are located. The wet washes canvases of his houses are finished of, uh, with ceramic roofs that appear as a single clay work that molds all the mountain. Its dense urban fabric has historically alternated with full of empty spaces, dots into the landscape of roofs with patios, corrals, and passages that spoke 
is its territory. The old slaughterhouse, when we have to, to work, uh, it's a modest 19th century construction built at the periphery of the city. But nowadays, uh, it's surrounded by different houses and dwellings all around. The main building uh, was placed around a courtyard that separates a first bay of two floors a lot bearing walls from a warehouse whose purpose was the slaughterhouse of cattle. This dense architecture, this side, this one is a former building. This dense architecture with few windows made by whitewashes, uh, canvases, Arabic tiles, roofing and carrying columns from the ancient temple of Hercules contrasted with the symmetrical space that remained empty for 150 years as a place for arrival for the arrival of the cattle. This empty space was the negative reflection of the slaughterhouse and the courtyard for the cattle was a backhand place limited by the powerful whitewashed walls that enclosed the site. In the 70s of the last century, the building closed as municipal slaughterhouse after having a series of reforms during the previous decades. The building became after a municipal warehouse and the cattle arrival void was turned into an improvised dump. As this is the, the photograph that we took when, when we arrived to the place. And the new use that we have to develop in the, in the building consists of an extensive cooking school program with different areas of kitchen. We have three, three different areas. The area of watching is this one, the cooking area and the seasoning area in this point. Uh, the, the program is also a kind of warehouse, cameras, uh, locker room, offices, didactic bar, um, all of them is the program of the new cooking school that we have to project in this building. The first decision of the project is to place all the new functions in this empty space for the cattle. So in the original building, this side, um, we only locate the uses that don't need to build partitions or smaller spaces like the dining room, the deductive bar or the, um, or the administration space. Another argument related to the context decides the proposal. The project proposed to catch the space that has remained vacant for a century and a half with a ceramic covering. The roof, the rooftop, uses the idea of ceramic topography of Medina Sidonia to trace a geometry that configures a broken section completely covered by pieces of fire ceramic. The roof covers the new didactic cooking program, while in the slaughterhouse we place the more public spaces open to the original patio. In this way, the intervention clarifies the original area of the building, this one, mm -hmm. stripping it of the poor extensions that occurred in the last decades and freeing it from servant uses. This is another sketch that we did during the program, during the project. On the other hand, the new intervention underlines its autonomy through the protected roof that reinterprets the vernacular composition mold from Medina of white walls uh, topped with ceramic pieces. The architectural intervention on a pre-existence building is an action in the world context where it locates. As Spanish architect Jose Luis Sostre said, even when we design a new building on a vacant lot, we configure a new globality because the site be belongs to a place in continuous evolution, whose present reality de derives from its past circumstances and the transformation of this place influences in the future traces. Every project is an intervention on what exists. From this perspective, 
it's not possible to establish the usual dialectic between the old and the new, even between conservation, restoration, and intervention. Everything attends to a single project spread over time and of a shared authority between architects of different times, where continuity arises through of transformations. Any alteration, even if it only tries to repair the deteriorated parts, is actually traumatic and requires the attention and the study, and the study or to understand the deep reasons of the construction and of the construction and we were going to act. The proposal used the vernacular tradition of popular buildings from so many southern cities, whitewashed walls of great thermal inertia, courtyards used as shaft of ventilations and breathable ceramic roofs. Under the new ceramic roof, we have to uh, we have the didactic uh, kitchens and the classrooms. The warehouse and cold rooms are located in thick bands, which resolve the transition between the different spaces. This is kind of thick bands in which we put all the, the little, the minor uses of the program. And seven uh, small patios uh, close the roof and function as ventilation shaft, I said, and little gardens of culinary, culinary spaces. Culinary spaces? Sorry. So on the original building, we only tried to clean, demolishing the old constructions without any value and opening the old patio to the street through the Zawang. Also, uh, once again, this kind of open room to the street. We used the old cattle entrance for the new cooking school corridor. Trust me, I didn't mean to be an uh, educational metaphor. This was for the castle and for the cattle and not for the student, but it's just a coincidence. And when we enter through the corridor, we can observe the activity of the kitchen through these um, uh, big windows. The space under, oh, okay, sure. Our. The space under the ceramic roof is an open plan, but nuances, but the section. Between the different cooking areas, we disposed the gross bands with the warehouse, the little patios, fridge rooms. This is uh, the little patio, the thick bands, and the other and the small uses. Yeah, sorry. The small patios and the high windows that rise in the walls provide cross ventilation and light. They are popular and traditional devices for environmental control. We can find them in the Mediterranean culture, also in Andalusian popular houses. In the kitchen, we use a ceramic tile for covering floor and walls. The point is to provide a genic continuous spaces as a clay plot. So the new space of the cooking school develops between the ceramic kitchen and the ceramic roof. The former building houses two powerful one-piece Roman columns of great dimensions that supported the roof of the beef cutting room, the main work space of the building. These columns present erosions on their entire diameter of a height of a meter and a half Nothing clarifies the reason for, for the wear of that columns. A conversation with the last slaughterer who inhabited the slaughterhouse uh, allowed us to know the origin of these trays. The Roman columns of the slaughterhouse were used to bind the, the bulls. The wet and the sloping ground caused their stumble where they, where they go, go down, fall down, they are finally sacrificed. Sacrificing. The persistent trace of, the, of that daily event in the place is part of the memory of the slaughterhouse and define its raw character. So we wanted to preserve something of his crude sense 
that still inhabits in the walls, preventing the intervention from erasing the memory of the place. Okay. The old slabs were replaced by, by concrete slab formed with the slats forming curved groups that refer to the original slabs. Barge and lime mortar cover the walls and the pavement is a raw green granite. We wanted to be sure that the installations always remain in the background of the space. The project want to address both the existing typological and constructive issues and the history of the building in relation to the population where it locates. We also want to resort its space use a, a slaughterhouse, a memory that conditions the place beyond strictly ar architectural arguments. Everything is somehow rough and dry, trying not to lose the memory of the place dedicated to a primitive industry that began thousands of years ago, when the Roman columns marked today by the cattle belong to a temple. The project, okay. Yeah. I said, it was nice to know that according to archeologists and historians, the supports come from the Roman temple of Hercules and were transferred through, throughout Medina Sidonia, tracing a scattered network of broken columns. And still today, that is still visible in different public spaces of the city. Meanwhile, the ceramic of the roof are equally modest. It's a 14 per 14 centimeter piece of fire clay, like those that line so many Andalusian rooftops, that uh, the extensive arrangement in vertical and inclined planes gives it a new meaning to the ceramic tile with no sophisticated details. We actually use a very simple ceramic tile, the most uh, common on the roof of popular houses, but we ask for them cut in a half and we use them of uh, all roof surfaces, not just the horizontal one. That is a resource that we like to, to work usually, take a conventional construction element and use it in an uh, alternative way giving it a new meaning. For example, in this family, familiar house that we are finishing close to Seville, we are taking these ceramic pieces, usually used for building the stairs, the steps of the stairs, but we put on in, vertical, in a vertical way. So for building a lattice wall for, to provide private light and ventilation. Perhaps it could be a characteristic of our work related with the contest on we work where there isn't too much resources. The focus is take advantage of the possibilities you can get. It could be something about the beautiful poem of Pindaro, the classic Greek poet. Pindaro says, oh my soul, do not aspire to, a, to an immortal life, but exhaust the limits of the possible. We like to think this is the best intention of our work, to exhaust the limits of, our, of what is possible. At the end, the intervention is not so striking at all. It's just another element that arises over the walls, like, a, like all over that you can see in this area, where patios are occupied by, by different construction. I like to think have, we have proposed a new layer on the history of the building, not the last, the last one, of course. We agree with Claudio Magris on his definition of a place in relation to time. He said, a place is not only its present, but also the labyrinth of different times and periods that intersect in a landscape and constitute it, as well as faults, wrinkles, expressions, excavated by happiness or melancholy, not only mark a face, but are the face of that person, who never has only the age of the state of mind of that moment, but the set of all ages and all the moods of his life. Beautiful, no? 
<laughs> Sorry. Okay. So the intervention strategy of the Kugan School project works like these small crabs, you know, that live in the abandoned shell that they find, no? you know, this kind of animal, yes? Um, in other words, the craft has got its own bi biological and formal rules, quite different to this other of the shell which houses him. So in the confrontation of both diverse physical realities, the former shell, shell and the new inhabitant, we discover a powerful encounter and we registered a new space. It is not the space of the crab, not the space of the shell, but a third space, the space between them that founds a new deep limit. This reflection about the limit between the found space and the desired space is the focus of this little project that I'm going to explain now. I mean, the encounter between the space we have to intervene and the space we wish to create. This is a tale about the owners of a famous restaurant in Seville at today, who wanted to go back to the origin of their business. Almost 20 years ago, when they founded an atelier in a former store for cooking with friends and experimenting with their new recipes. The little uh, warehouse they rented where the culinary workshops takes place has a particular volume in which everything relates to the central cast iron column in this point. It's like 40 square meters with a cast iron just in the middle. You know, it's little and in the middle you've got a, a cast iron column that presides, presides over the premise. So from, from the bleak uh, light that seeps through the two facade openings and in front of the backyard, we can see the powerful brickwork walls that reveal the construction history of the building located in the historical area of Seville. This is the place before uh, we intervene. There were only the big walls, one toilet or toilet in this point, you can see. Uh, it's like a 40 square meters, I said, and the cast iron column exactly in the middle of the space. You know, this is like a little problem. When you arrive to the space, you can see, okay, this is going to be my best project. And you can see just 40 square meters, like a quarter of this room, and with the column just in the middle, welcoming you. The term the term culinary workshops refers to a, common, a communal act in which the art of cooking is open to a group of people. It is no longer a hidden process, but a revelatory, revelatory action in which the chef shows the secrets to the participants. We started to draw some sketches showing the bodies moving around the iron cast, the iron cast column, I said. This participatory action suggests a, ceremony, a ceremonial assembly where the configuration of, uh, of the space is around the act of cooking and the cast iron column. We try not to consider the central column as a problem, but the first step of the intervention, even before us. The column would be the pattern of the movements in the space. Its position would decide the design of the table and the disposition of people attending to the, to the chef. Is there something related to this famous image? All of you, I'm sure you know it, sorry. Um, this famous image of, of, of the work of Aldo Van Eyck, the boy, the circle, and the column define the space. It doesn't matter what has been before. We propose a chip car carpet around the column that polar polarizes the space underlining its centrality through a multiple circular and concentric shapes around it as the maximum expression of the meeting place, the circle as a primitive form that is related to the, to the meeting of people. The project is uh, more than a furniture or an installation, if you want, something that could be reversible. It is like a new element that inhabits the found space as the little craft that lives in the, in the borrowed shell. 
We su superpose a new geometry uh, and material rules to the former space, confronting the two realities. This is the encounter between the found space and the desired space. In the limit between them, we discover a third space. It is a thick border that we can inhabit and we can use. It's a space of conciliation between the outside and the inside, between the given space and the new one. It's like a, these images remind me like um, a watch box, you know, but a, a real very good watch. The box is very bigger than the, 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 own, the own watch, you know? So in the encounter of the two different forms, you can find a third space between them. So, you know, of course, we are talking about the Baroque resource. Borromini tried this strategy better than anyone. Seville has many, many beautiful examples of Baroque chapels in which the main space is made up of a belt of minimum spaces. This is not the, 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 the last project of the San Carlino Ale Quattro Fontane. It's, it's like the first sketches of the project but it's really clear, no? You can see the belt of the minor uses that allows to, to con conform the, the main space, like in San Carlino that you can see, no? As you will understand, I'm not uh, comparing my project with Borromini's one. It's not so, so it's, this is a direction. I just want to say that perhaps, uh, as Cesare Brandi said, there is no architecture that is not indebted to a paradigmatic precedent. And for us, this is really important. For us, architecture is a continuous tale that we are just working the same ideas that perhaps Borromini, Borromini did. And in this project, the Baroque, in this project, in the, in the atelier, in the cooking atelier, the Baroque spirit is very present. In fact, Elias Torres, an admired Spanish architect, said about our project that Maria and I Maria is my, my couple in the life and in the, in the studio. Maria and I had made a Japanese Baroque chapel. <laughs> Finally, the plan presents the cooking workshop space around the column, the, the iron column, in which to conceive recipes and teach gastronomy resources. Olive oil tasting and waste tasting. And around it, a dense belt of minor uses, all of that, that serve uh, as a re reception point, a wine cellar, the bathroom in the corner, access to the small patio in the back of the space and the office and the kitchen bar and a lot of storage space. From the entrance, we can recognize the white central space. We are now in this in-between space at the photograph. We are still at the street, but coming in the boundary of the space. So the central volume of the culinary workshop is defined by a curved, a curved ash wood whose geometric center is the cast iron column. This boundary created the secondary space that arose between the convex face of the circumferences and the limits of the premises for the necessary uses. It offers a clear reading of the space in which secondary areas are displaced to the margins and integrated into the curved geometry, avoiding the proliferation of elements that cloud and compress a reduced space like this one. We build a structure that allows us to create an enveloping atmosphere that also builds the secondary installations and the reinforcements of the existing structure, at this point, the, the roof. At a 230 centimeters height, the curved face of the screen stops and the supporting mountains behind continue up, then point into the, the central column. In fact, in fact, it was one of the most difficult challenges of the project. We want to arrive with all the wooden spokes to the center, to the cast of uh, iron, iron column, but it's not 
you can understand that this is not like a bicycle wheel, the section of the beans borders to each other. That's we remind one of our Santinos, like Eduardo Soto de Moura called to his favorite architects. We remember this incredible, wonderful project by Franco Albini, the San Lorenzo Cathedral Crypt in Genoa. And we learn how Albini stopped one of each two beings for reaching to the center of the circumference. This is the work of, of Albini. This is a concrete work, of course, and we use wood, but we can learn about the master who came before us. For us, this is a beautiful lesson of our architectural history. We walk a path that others walk before us. We could say about architectural works, work as T.C. Eliot said, every poetic work arises in some way from critical reflection on another poetic work. Okay, finally, we could cover the space with our spokes, stopping two of each three beams before to reaching to the column. And the first step on the construction site was to draw the table with the help of two urbanists, friends of us, who made it, who made the table. The table for dinners and students embraces the cast iron column and preside over by the chef table, full of instruments and materials, as you can guess. The surface eight is very able to accommodate the act of cooking and eating. It was made with wood from the street of Seville, orange tree, rovinia, cypress, melia, olive tree and grevillea, some of American and Australian origin, because you know Seville was the capital of the world in the in the 16th, 16th century, yeah, when America was uh, we arrived to America, reclaimed after the annual pruning of after being filled by high winds. My friends, the Evanis, take the boot on the street directly on the street. They dry the boot during two years in his in their own atelier, and they don't make an industrial process. They just work with like a handcrafter uh, with the book. The Spanish philosopher Gustavo Bueno maintained that the table is the floor of the hands, an anthropological consequence of our evolution that had to provide a surface for craft once the hands were released from the motor function. The table, the table is raised floor on this way. Building screen and table make the space up. So we can speak of an installation rather than uh, built architecture, in which the relationship with the existing column is more an option and a position, sorry, than in interaction. It's also a reversible installation which can be moved in any time, adding a new layer to the history of the place without being permanent. The limit of these spaces is a conciliation device between public and private space. It is the Thawan, the popular Andalusian in between space, which belongs to the street and to the inner space at the same time. It's a space shaped by the public space, but also by the interior space, with two faces with different materiality and geometry. There is an incredible, amazing project that I can't resist to tell you, it's not mine, it's a, it's a pity. It's in Begevano, Ita Italy. I think it's perhaps the best resume of that concept about the complex limit of architecture. Oh, sorry, see, okay. At the end of the 15th century, Bramante made this beautiful square dictated by the Renaissance, the Renaissance principles of symmetry and axiality. But in front of the square, in this point, um, there was before the main church of Bigevano. The church was before the, the square, rotated from the axis of the square. During almost two centuries, there wasn't a solution from the encounter of these two spaces, of these two axes. 
almost 119 years later, an anonymous but obviously very clever, very intelligent architect designed the new facade for the old church. The facade grows to meet the orthogonality of the square. You can see how the facade is engrossing this point just for, for fine, for meat with the axis of the, of the square. Even crossing the street outside the church to form a complete facade facing Bramante Square. It is a striking example of how the limit of architecture could be the third space, not outside, not inside, but in the middle. The last project I'm going to tell you reflect about this principle of the complex limit. The issue is a house of a family with three children. It is located on the edge of a low density neighborhood facing, to, facing the rear of an avenue of urban penetration with a lot of traffic. And this is an important point from, for the project. The plot is a square, 10 meters on each side with three dividing walls and a very sunny south facing people, uh, pardon, facade. We're in Seville again, remember south, it could be the death in summer. The first thought about the house is related to how a new run, a new run home with an extensive family program like this one, requires a large number of technical and mineral spaces. These spaces are so important for domestic life as those that we usually call main spaces. I'm talking about bathrooms, to toilets, kitchens, cabinets, laundry rooms, clothes lying, a space for facilities, warehouse, wardrobes, uh, stairs, bicycle racks, and terraces. All of them constitute a collection of active spaces. They are as decisive of those dedicated to rest or to relax and relaxation. This double condition, the site full of traffic facing to the strong sun of the south, and the many minor uses that we have to develop, suggest moving this collection of small activities, also of small spaces to the perimeter of the site freeing the center of the square for main rooms that will be protected by a double belt of storage and facilities. The project proposed to explore the space in the limit of architecture. It's something related to this famous work of Cristo and Jean-Claude. You know, they are very famous and popular artists. I'm sure that you know them. You know, this artist who involved Mm, buildings with, with a very big, a giant canvas. Do you, do you know this artist? Yes? Okay. They are very famous artists um, because they were able to objectualize the architecture, erasing the architectural attributes with the canvas. With their action, the scale of the building disappears, also the architectural language. But we are actually interested in their work as an object, but on the uh, as an object, but on the third space they create with their action. I mean the space between the canvas and the facades. I haven't found any image of this space, but this architectural plan of the Christian Jean Claude project reveal a very dense space in between, in the limits that we can have it. You can imagine how 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 can we inhabit this, this space between the canvas and the facade? It is a deep scheme that allows us to modulate our relationship with the environment. Finally, a double, a double brick wall box, the first exterior and the second one interior, thickens the limits of the site and houses the four concrete pillars set back from the dividing walls. We put just four pillars of concrete pillars in this point, not exactly in the corner because the the house uh, behind are very are, um, are not very well built. So we prefer to separate the column from the from the neighbor. Uh, the rooms with the wet facilities are arranged in the outer ring, allowing natural ventilation and associating the down spot or the facilities to the four concrete supports. 
The slab of each uh, floor rests on the four pillars situated on the corner of the second ring. The concrete slab made late lighter with the Serlian typology spanning almost 70 square meters with only four pillars. So the volume of the house has like a false bottom the box, like the magician's ones, you know, in which we locate the stairs, the bathroom, the civilian Thawang, of course, where you can park the bicycle, the wardrobes, the facility rooms, or even a little swimming pool at the terrace. All these minor uses set up a protecting belt that insulate the house from the neighbor, the noisy street, and the hard sun of the bill in summer. This third space in between reconciles the meeting between the public and the private areas. The double facade makes it possible to provide the precise scale to the windows of the domestic interior and the urban exterior. Inside or outside, I mean, you've got the window that you need in the inside of the house, in the, in the bedroom, for example, and for the street, perhaps we need another kind of uh, window with a larger um, size or, or with another language, architectural language. Responding to the design fun functional of the house or figurative requirements of the street. In the access to the house with the unfolding of the facade generates a hallway where you can leave your bicycle, the umbrellas or the dirty shoes, whatever. And after the thawang, the gray bricks take us to the interior from the facade with the same materiality of clay and concrete. From this point, the idea is that you can go into the head of the house, the interior square, or you can go upstairs through the gross skin, inhabit again the limit. A quarter of the interior square is reserved for the patio to which the living room kitchen and the master bedroom are turned. And once again, the material of the outside and inside wall is the same, the gray brick that we use in two sizes, the Castilian or Spanish size and the English one. It's a little difference of the height. of the height. English is quite taller than the Spanish one and the use uh, depending in the, in, if we are working on the outside or in the inside. Perhaps it's too much rhetoric, but something that you have got in the table when you are working and you think it's an incredible idea. And finally, it's not so important. The point is to add the space of the courtyard to the living room when, is, uh, when this is open or remaining it as a closed space when the patio is it's outside is, clo is closed. This is us, but it's not our home. The point is that in a little practice like us, we are serving in the, of in the office, uh, you have to do everything. And when I say everything, I say everything. And the, the day of the photographs, uh, the owner of the house has has uh, moved to to the by holidays. I don't know. Uh, we have to to be models for a day. The patio is also the opportunity to relate the different floors of the house, like a double height open to the sky. And obviously, it is once again a popular typology of the Andalusian houses that we want to use in a contemporary way. We want to use the material with no plaster paintings and other coatings, just the natural expressions of the boot, concrete and ceramic bricks. And uh, the patio and the stairs are the elements that link the different levels of the house. The stairs is a straight one of the top of the house. The reason is because the father's family is from Argentina and he wanted to welcome them to, to his family when they visit Seville, but preserving some privacy of the family. So we thought the stair is like this kind of stair of the castle ones, you know, developed in the wall, in the periphery of the walls of the volume. So you can go upstairs without cross the house. You can remind probably this beautiful draw of Louis Kang of the Normandian, Normandian, Normandian castle with all the little and minor uses around the main space always in the periphery, in, inside the wall, in fact. And in this space, 
in the, stair, in the stairs that inhabit the wall, the light came from the, from the skylights. The belt of minor rooms and spaces goes around the heart of the house, creating even terraces where the brick wall is permeable for providing ventilation through the, through the courtyard. As I said, at the beginning, we are not interested in the rhetoric of bricks. I'm not really interested in how every, you know, we can say to his students, the brick, talk to him. I, I, sh I swear that I tried, but brick doesn't talk to me. So I'm not really interested in how the, all the pieces, all the bricks, are talking the first day you can identify how these the windows has the bricks in one mode and the other one in another way. I prefer this aspect of the of the all the covering in the same material with the powerful of the same material covering all the surfaces. Uh, so I we we use the, the brick as a continuous scheme that uh, we can develop over, over all the surfaces. I said. Um, but the point is that this requires a very hard work of planning in which we have to decide where we start with the first line of brick, as you can suppose, or how we have to finish the walls. I remember in this moment of a really hard work in the studio, when you feel alone, you know, all the, the weight of the bricks are on your shoulder. And I remember this quote of Villanova Artigas, the, the incredible Brazilian architect who said, I invite, I envy poets because with a few words, they are, they are able to express what I need thousand and thousand of bricks for. Incredible, no? A poet with two, three, perhaps 20 words can, can describe the wide world and an architect needs like hundreds of thousands of bricks to say perhaps one word. This is not fair. The intention of incorporating the exterior space into the living room suggests using the same material for the walls um, to blur the limits between the interior and the intermediate spaces. The gray, the gray, the, the gray brick constitutes the two walled boxes that make up uh, the thick skin of the house. And this ceramic uh, materiality together with the concrete floors gives uh, the space a constructive expression that nuances the structure of the, of the plan. Even the floor of the patios and the terrace are ceramic, built with the same bricks, or in, in other time with this kind of big ceramic hollow brick. This kind, they are Portuguesian. Almost everything that Portuguesian made is well made. I can, I can, Sure that. So in this first floor, the main bedrooms in this, this is the plan of the first floor. The main bedroom is open to the courtyard. In this point, this is the patio, the courtyard, and this is the, the main bedroom. And the other three, the, the children bedrooms, uh, are protected from the south. This is the south and the southern sunlight and the immediacy of the street full of, 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 of traffic, remember, by the loggia, they have with the skin, uh, with the thick skin and the belt of the house, no? So you have got an uh, intermediate space between the bedroom and the noisy street. Finally, the roof terrace at the top of the house is conceived as a place to celebrate and meet with friends and family. It is also the reason because we propose to reach this floor with a certain independence from the rest of the house through the straight stairs inserted between the two brick boxes as a walk walking in a tangential transit with exterior character. And in the terrace, the dense limit of the belt of minor uses became a green border with the street and a little swimming pool over the, the stairs. You can also look down to the house through the, through the courtyard and uh, to register all the different levels and the floors of the house. Uh, that's a very compact house because the family is very big and this, the plot is not so, so it's quite small. 
but thanks to the patio and all this belt with the voids, you can, you can get a porous materiality. All these projects in which we have developed the concept of dense limit, our own architectural research. Of course, of course, there is an academical intention also. I mean, we have built this curiosity about this kind of spaces because we find them in many projects we have uh, studied through the years. One of some of them I show you as a student or as a teachers. But there is also something related to the culture in we live on. I'm talking about the Southern culture again, full of this type of in-between spaces. We can find them in the most popular architecture, architecture and also in the best renamed examples, as in the canvas of Fra Angelico, called La Nonsezione, as you know, where public and private space, the inside and the outside meet. Sorry. So it's deeply assimilated by us in a natural way. Even when we work far away from the south, from the south of Spain, we translate our own interest to the new context. Now we are working in some big projects in South Korea, like I told you at the beginning of the, of the speech. Thanks to three competitions, we were able to win, like one year and a half. I'm just going to talk slightly about one of them, uh, this is a metropolitan, metropolitan library in Jinju, a medium city in the south of South Korea. This is the kind of neighborhood that you can find there in, in, in Asia. You know, they are building in Asia nowadays. You know, very fast, very dense and very high. Uh, at the left, you can see this hill. This is the park of the neighborhood and the only public space of this area of the city. The um, competition proposed to project the new library in this point in the hill, but the problem is that this is a 45 degree slope with 30 meters of height. So we understood that the true subject of the competition, it was a library of course, but also how to link the super dense urban structure with the green area of the park on the hill. We propose three terraces. You can see the three terraces uh, in different aids to avoid the slope with a passage walk in the middle of the first and the second terraces. Here, this is a public walk, public um, passage uh, that, um, that uh, link the city with the park. The, lab the library will be a bridge between the city and the park because we, perhaps as a southern people, we will we will know that the perimeter of a building is not necessarily the limit of architecture, but the public space can cross through it. Finally, a big green roof cover the three terraces and the passage the passage walk. And it allows us to control the direct views to the massive and perhaps really hard dwellings. From the city to the park, going up to the hill, the first terraces, the, the first terrace is the most public program as the cafe area and the community center. After to go under it, we arrive to the public passage for this point to go under it and to arrive to the passage walk to connect with the park. The second terrace is the children reading area, this one, of this point, and the media center in this point, linking the two, the two higher levels. And the last terrace is in the top of the park, and it is the main reading area, with some patios which divide the different uses. This is interesting. It's like Medina Sidonia cooking school, but really bigger, you know? So, you can change your country like you now studying here in Spain, but some of you, some of I, when we work in Asia, is always with you. So I don't know if you um, explain me. Uh, there is something that it depends of the context, but there is another side of your work that depends of your culture, of your education, is always with you. From the city, we will see a quiet kind of building, not so tall, 
with the transparency to the cafe area and the community center and with the green roof, with the park in the back. I think perhaps the section of the project is quite expressive. You can see the three terraces, the most public one facing to the city, the other one uh, more insulated, uh, looking at the park and where you are going to run. And in the middle, this is the public passage. You can cross the, the, the building also when it's closed for arriving to the park and the big roof covering the, the, top, the stepped terraces. These are some images of the competition. We, this week we have begun, we have started to, to build the first of the three projects that we are doing there in, in South Korea. And now we are working in the studio in the office in this project. We have to, to finish the work too much early, perhaps. <laughs> there are some images of the competition. I said, this is uh, the passage, the public passage walk to the park from the community center. One view of the children library with one of the patios of the courtyards separating the media center at the, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Okay. The media center is in the back of the, of the courtyard or one image uh, from the main reading area looking down towards the cafe area where we can see how transparency relates the three spaces and also the public promenade, but the different levels allow us to maintain their independency. And finally, after to cross the building through the public uh, passage, we arrive to the park uh, on the other side of the library. You can arrive even to the cafe, to the cafe area from direct, directly from the from the park. So. I have said before that our interest on the spaces in between, the third space, we, we like to call it, uh, the space between the inside and the outside, and in how the southern cities where the public spaces go inside the private plots, plots, is an interest we have educated from our vital or vital memories. But this is true that we have learned to work with it through our architectural look. It is a mix between memory and learning. This photograph is, uh, is of a wonderful building built at the beginning of the 20th century in Seville, very close to my home. It's a dwelling public building, social houses, in fact. It's a modern project. You can see the position of the stairs. You can uh, you can see the plan dividing the day and the night areas of the house, so it's completely modern. We can recognize our rational intelligence behind this project. But the most interesting uh, decision was to give a public street to the city that allows to the citizens to cross the very big plot. Remember, it's bigger than the, than the Plan Cerda uh, plots in Barcelona, and discover its heart a new passage called Pasaje Balvanera. So Passage Balvanera, Pasaje Balvanera, it's beautiful. Nobody, nobody asked to the architect to do that, to do the passage, but they understood that with this action, they were going to enrich not only the dwellings, the social housing, but the city. Nowadays, this project is learned as a student some years ago, too much years, I, I, I guess, is the passage that my children go across every day from the school to home. They told to me it's like a magical street, hide and surprising that allows them to arrive quickly to our home. This is a personal experience, part of my memory. It's also a wonderful example as, uh, of good and generous architecture about the, um, uh, sorry, I said, it's also a wonderful example of good and generous architecture. About it, the Italian master Aldo Rossi said, Balbanera is a house and a street, a bridge and a path. The term passage goes beyond the typological definition to signify the walkway toward a new architecture where people meet and is free, where reality is the basis of the imagination. Balbanera could be a novel or a movie. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Okay, I'm really sorry for my English. It's not, it's not my native language, but I can attend to your question if, if you want. Um, does it work? I don't think it works. Perfect. Uh, so my question uh, actually lies um, in the sphere of materiality. So all of your projects they have very specific scale, and uh, you know the relation between spaces is very well sought after. I kind of want to ask, how does um, the scale of the rooms and the spaces you create relate to the materials you work? Because mm -hmm. you showed the bricks, you showed the wood, you showed you know, the re renovation, and in all the spaces, you somehow managed to keep this you know, mm -hmm. very nice uh, relation between space. Thank you. Um, how we do that? Hmm? I think asking a lot to the to the people who knows about this material because you can imagine how you are going to work with them but in fact you need to to talk directly with the people who is going to to installate to install this material because we have to learn to work with the handcrafter with the people who work in the industry before to arrive to the construction site. And of course, the second step, step is to draw a lot. And when I say to draw a lot, I'm talking about, you are going to draw a first um, option of the project with the ideas, perhaps the most conceptual project you know, or conceptual drawings. After you are going to arrive in a um, way perhaps when you are like a blind, more or less, you are not sure, but you can, you've got the intuition, the, the, the ideas. So how can you work with this material? But you are researching about the material. You are talking with the, with the, with the industry or with the handcrafter. And when you've got all the information, you have to redraw again with the real uh, knowledge of the material, of the the different process of construction. So I've got, I haven't got a recipe. We are perhaps um, quite chaotic when we try and when we work, but with the age, and this is too much today, I have learned that you have to talk with everyone and you have to draw a lot. This is my recipe. Thank you. I would like to firstly thank you very much for the, the lecture because I think it, uh, it's been really inspiring, not only for us, but for, for students. I have to say that what it looks simple, it takes a lot of time as you as you were explaining right now, no? because when you talk about this raw material, no? mm -hmm. leaving things like as they are, it took a lot of more decisions, more time, more mm -hmm. growing, That's as true. you were saying. But I want you to, if you can talk a little bit about the amazing resources that we've been seeing in terms of communication that you were saying with drawings, sketches, models, no? so important mm. for also for the for the students. Yeah. I think it's a very, very good in fact, way something of- something similar to, to this speech. When you talk with your client, you are not talking the same language. So you have to work with a lot of models, drawings, because it's like a universal language. My English is not my native language, I said. So I have brought all of my drawings and models for community with you and with the client, something similar. No? <laughs> Anybody else? Juanjo, okay, thank you. And there is another question uh, in addition to what Javier was saying regarding communication. And this amount of time and work you're saying, it's not only 
producing forward, I mean, developing the range for the project, we can see an, another layer that it's the readings that are behind of the theory that is behind of each project. Because uh, in any project you are relating to Borromini uh, for, or painting that is not only architecture, it's not only contemporary architecture. Also the quotes are behind of any thought of your project. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it's, uh, for me, it's really important you to explain it during this presentation, but I think it's a good example for students that to have an idea or to create something is not only start drawing, there is a background behind and before that let you take mm -hmm. some ideas or something like that. Is it yeah, you know, uh, one quote again, you know that Jorge Luis Borges said that he's not, a, he wasn't a, a real, a real big writer, but a real big reader. So uh, I am not if what we are doing, in fact, if we are doing good architecture, we try, but you are not so sure. But what I'm sure is that I'm a really architectural lover. I love architecture. So I cannot limit my architectural world to the works that I, don't, I do. I prefer to think that all architecture is for, is for me. It's like a gift that history of architecture has, has, has given to me. And this is the point. I really enjoy with architecture, but not only doing, but learning about the architecture of, of this other. It's like, a, it's, it could be, could be stupid if I don't use all the intelligence, sensibility that we have got accumulating the centuries before us, even the, the architecture of the past. Because the problem is that normally, actually, the historians, the bad historian uh, teachers, like the bad uh, teachers of projects, has learned to ask the history like a problem of causes and consequences. But in fact, you can talk to Bolomini in the same plane, like in a horizontal uh, relationship, if you understand that he's only an architect who has got a problem of project with not a style, with no time, with no history, with no famous words, just an architect who has to do a very little chapel in a cross in Rome called San Carlino. He was so smaller and he was so small that people said San Carlino, not San Carlos, San Carlino. You know, it's the same problem that you can take on your, your own work. If you see the history of architecture in this plane, it is just architectural problems. You can talk with all the architects that they are before you. This is my point of view. And thank you. I, I want to, to make one more comment and, and it's linked with this because um, I think everything comes from the attitude towards the project or towards life. Uh, in your case, I think it, for, for me, there are like two features. One is um, a holistic view or an open view to feed your architecture, not just with architecture. You, you, are a, uh, you have a great knowledge about architecture, but you are feeding also with readings. You, I think you had also even a methodology through readings uh, in the Architectural School of Seville with your students mm -hmm. to, to feed the project. Uh, and that, that's quite good because it's not just architecture, it's literature, it's painting, it's sculpture, it's uh, movies, whatever. So openness and then uh, humble. I think uh, your approach to architecture is humble. Is, uh, you, you reach the greatness through humble and that's really complicated. Uh, you haven't said anything, but all these projects have a price. <laughs> yeah, be, because you won a contest or because after making the project, you want to you receive a prize. And it, it hasn't to be with the with the size or the scale. It goes from from a public building or for a great uh, contest in Korea to a tiny house of 100 square meters in Seville. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't nothing to be with with the scale or with size, but with the probably the, the attitude or the love towards uh, making the project. So thank you. 
Yes, I guess. <laughs> so, um, la primera cuestión era sobre... Um, ah, sí, 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 ok. The point is that before the architectural form, before that we have decided how our building is going to be, the ideas are common to, the, to a photographer, to an artist, to a writer, to an architect. I mean, before to, to fix the idea in a form, we can talk in the same plane again, but not only with architects. For example, with the Cristo Ajan Claude work, the, the canvas uh, covering the, the buildings, this is an architectural action, of course. You have just to, uh, to, to don't look at the specified language of the artist, but in the ideas world, you can talk about it, you can take it and you can uh, use it in your own work. The other point about this strategy or, or way to work is that, of course, you are going to show only the the, ¿cómo se dice punta? the pike, Come on. Peak. the peak of the iceberg. You know, Ernest Hemingway said, no, you you have gone only the peak of the iceberg, but um, under the surface of the of the sea of the water, they have got they have got a really big mass that is supporting the peak. I think a project or the project that interests to me is something like that. Perhaps you are going to act just in a little corner of a city like Seville in a private client, something really minimum. But the ideas, perhaps they are really bigger than their, than their own project. And this is really interesting for us. Also, because we think that we are in a path, we are in a in a way, and the little uh, the little project that we are doing now perhaps is the future. In the future, is a big project with some idea. I want to. Can I show you something? Just a little something. Ah, pero no puedo poner un espaldo. Puedo si lo si lo miro aquí sí puedo, ¿no? I want to show you that. This is the chair. The Franco Albini, the Italian master, was doing during a lot of years before to do the, the San Lorenzo script, the San Lorenzo Cathedral script. You can see it's exactly the same project, but it's a chair. It has changed the scale, but the idea, the power of the idea is exactly the same. So when we began to, to, to work, when we start to work, you usually has uh, got, uh, can get to the little projects, the project of a familiar, thank you, or a little competition you, you can win. But the idea, it doesn't matter if the project is a little size or a big size. The idea could be really great. And Franco Albini is incredible because he did the, the chairs like a model of the future project. And this is incredible, it's amazing, no? We try to do something similar. <laughs> but with no chairs. Okay. So, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Oh. 